Hi there, my name is Martin Schroeder and in this video we're going to look at the implementation of a simulation bridge that will allow us to uh, simulate peripherals using C code. So uh, basically what we will be able to do is uh, define a peripheral and map it into our microcontroller address space inside the simulation and then uh, to pass all of the reads and writes to this address space to our simulated peripheral which we write in C. So it's going to be a shared library here that we, we're going to implement and uh, then all of the reads and writes to this memory location from within our firmware is going to go to this, to this peripheral written in C. And the end result is going to look like this. So basically, we're going to have a very, very simple application that writes to one address and then has this peripheral copy the data to another address and then we'll read back the same value from another address. So uh, let's get started and uh, let's jump right into it. So we have our changes here. And make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I post videos about firmware development and embedded systems. So uh, I'm going to be posting more. Um, so we're going to start with a with a um, overview of the main .c here. Let's see if I can just go to this file. For some reason, GitLab sometimes just doesn't go to the file. So if I click the file and then it just doesn't go to the file. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can just scroll to the file. Right. So this is a very simple sample application which I've created for this purpose. And uh, the majority of the code is going to be in the implementation of the of the bridge itself, of the plugin to the simulator and the, the C implementation. But uh, here we just basically write to this memory address, which we have mapped inside our simulation. And uh, then we just write uh, a value to the input register, and then we read out the value from the output register. So um, how does it actually work? Well, in the, inside within Swedish Embedded SDK, we have a possibility to define simulations per board. So in this case, we're going to be building our application for the custom board. And uh, for the custom board, we have a simulation script defined here in the REST-C file. So uh, this file uh, defines the simulation environment. So here we can create multiple machines, we can connect them together, we can basically define the whole simulation environment. And in this case, we are importing this uh, custom plugin, which I've written for uh, the bridge itself. And then um, we import also the platform definition, which, which maps this virtual device into uh, the memory space of the microcontroller. And then we also uh, specify the shared library here uh, for this uh, for this device for the shared. We want to call it shared. It's it's just a name. It can be arbitrary name, uh, but this is going to be the handle we're going to use to access the device. So basically, we can then call C# -sharp functions uh, from within this script to uh, write double word or read double word, and the same thing can be done also from the firmware running inside the simulator. But this, this script is basically like a series of commands that are passed to the to the monitor, to the simulator, to the simulator console uh, that sets up the whole environment. And we can also automate this inside the SDK to run it um, inside CI automatically. So inside the uh, platform definition file, we define the device. So we import first the F4 uh, microcontroller platform definition. So this is going to give us all of the peripherals of the of the STM32 F4. And then we also add our device, our custom device here, and we map it into the memory address of 0x7000000. Uh, and then the size of this region is uh, 0x100. So then anything that is written or read from this memory location, so this means just direct memory access, is going to be passed into our C# -sharp code, which is then going to translate this call and pass it to the C code. So let's look at the implementation of this um, translation layer that translates from C# -sharp into the C code. And uh, this translation layer is implemented as a plugin. Um, it's a uh, in this, inside this Vision Embedded Platform SDK, we use Renode for simulation. And so uh, we can add arbitrary plugins to simulate to create simulation environments for a particular use case. So in this case, we can just create a C sharp file and uh, we place our plugin under Ant Micro Renode peripherals so that it becomes available alongside of all the other peripherals. 
And then basically we define a class. Um, in this case, it's shared library peripheral and it's gonna inherit interfaces. So the first interface that it inherits is the double word peripheral, which basically gives us uh, virtual methods or interface methods for uh, interacting with double word peripherals, which is 32-bit peripherals. Then we also implement disposable because we, we have a shared library that we load and we wanna dispose of that shared library. So we wanna have a dispose method called uh, before Reno shuts down so we can dispose of that, uh, of that library and deinitialize it. And then we also have a number GPI output and this is useful for implementing interrupts. Now, I'm not gonna add interrupts in, in, in this particular merge request, but uh, interrupts can be added as well uh, in such a way that you can have your um, you can have your C code generate events that are passed into a queue. And then we have a dedicated thread here that reads that queue and basically uh, processes those messages. So we can have asynchronous messages as well. And this gives us a full two-way communication between the simulated peripheral and uh, the simulation itself. So this C sharp file uh, has full access to all peripherals, uh, all peripherals defined for this simulation platform and all of the machines as well. So we could have multiple machines and each machine can have multiple peripherals and we can access all of them uh, within a plugin like this one. So, um, the first thing we do is we define a, a public property called library path and this property when we set it it's gonna uh, give us the uh, we're gonna pass to it the library path of the shared library so if you remember in the in the definition in, inside the rest file we actually set the library path now uh, inside this resource file we can we can call c sharp functions directly so in this case we're setting a property library path and we set it to the so file we can reference it uh, based on the origin based on the location of this file and we're actually going to build this file as well i'm going to show you later how we do it but um, when this property is set uh, there's a few things that happen so the first thing we do here is that we create a native binder. This is a class defined by Renode, and it's a helper class that helps us export functions to C code. So in this case, we pass this as basically our class, our instance of this device, and then we um, pass the, the shared library as a second argument. And so this class is going to bind the exported methods of the shared library into the methods of this class. And this is done through um, attributes of methods, as you can see here. So we have uh, a number of exported methods. So these methods are going to be exported to the C code. And then we have a number of imported methods. They're going to be imported from the C code. So when we call in when when we call one of these methods from C sharp, it's going to be translated into a C call. So when we call handle request, it's going to be it's going to go into the C code directly and uh, call this, the C function inside the shared library called handle request. And the same thing for the initialized native and reset peripheral. So um, if we go back to the uh, to the initialization here. Um, so, so we bind uh, we bind this C sharp class to the shared library, um, and then we also create uh, two buffers for for the messages. So one of them is going to be uh, messages sent to the device, and the other one is going to be asynchronous messages coming back from the device. And this um, Marshall allocate H global is basically uh, going to be like a um, like a memory buffer into which we're going to serialize our C sharp uh, uh, properties of the of the packet uh, of the protocol message and uh, then the C code can parse those properties um, properly. So this is the way in which um, C code can interact with the C sharp code and uh, we can sort of pass data back and forth. So uh, this class uh, protocol message it's uh, packed it's important that it's packed uh, because we want to have the the data precisely laid out in this way and we're going to do the same thing inside the C file as well so we have a corresponding structure here uh, which represents this um, message that we're going to be sending uh, as a way of communicating between the C code and C sharp code so uh, when we implement the peripheral uh, when we have a double word peripheral here and when we define the peripheral inside the, inside the platform definition and it's it becomes memory mapped whenever uh, the microcontroller firmware that's being simulated um, 
uh, writes to the, to the particular memory uh, area that uh, into which this peripheral is mapped we are going to get notified and we, the simulator is actually going to call uh, read double word or write double word. And this is because we have a double word peripheral. Now, if we have a byte peripheral, it's going to be like read byte or write byte. But these implementations are called whenever the firmware that we're simulating is uh, writing and reading from a memory address. So what we need to do here is basically pass those uh, those calls to the C code and get the result from the C code. So we are simulating this in C code. So we're going to construct a protocol message here, and we're going to serialize uh, this message with an address. So here we divide it by four because we have a 32-bit peripheral, and we translate this into register address. And then we are passing this uh, to the to the C code basically through the send method. And inside the send method, we can see here that we first serialize the, the message into the raw buffer, and then we call handle request. And handle request is actually going to end up inside the C code. So we can look at, if you remember here, the handle request is actually inside here. Um, it's an imported method from, from C code. And if we go to the C code here, we have a handle request defined like this. Let's see. So we, we have handle request defined here, and uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be called from the C sharp code. So it, it accepts the struct protocol packet, and uh, this this packet is also packed. So we can just uh, once it arrives here, it's perfectly readable from C code. So we can just parse it, and so here we just pass it to the peripheral object, and then when there is a write operation, and when we are writing to the input register, we then just copy the same data to the output register so we can read it out uh, within our firmware from the output register. And so um, once once we then read it out, we're going to get the same value. So here we have a, inside this this peripheral uh, peripheral struct, this is basically data for the peripheral, we have a register file which contains registers. And we basically just, for now, we just have two registers. And the first one, the, the one with index 0, it's unused. So we just use index 1 and index 2. Um, and um, yeah, and then and then later uh, inside, within the firmware, we are actually just writing to a memory address here. And it's important that this one is volatile because this memory address is is modified outside of the firmware, so it's modified inside the simulation. And volatile makes sure that there is no caching. So when when you read it out here, uh, volatile ensures that that the program the compiler generates code that actually reads it out from the memory address and doesn't cache it. Because otherwise, if we don't have a volatile here, we, we would end up with uh, zero value because um, a register out is, is zero in the beginning here. And so if it's cached, then the program will read it out, but then not read it out again when we need it the second time. And volatile tells the compiler to generate code that um, accesses the memory location every single time. So um, so that's it, and uh, and then we also have the ability to uh, to notify back to the uh, to the C sharp code. Uh, for example, if we have an interrupt, we can not we can send a notification back to the C sharp code, and we can also then implement interrupt handling inside the C sharp code. So we have a separate thread running here, monitoring for incoming messages inside the uh, message queue. But I haven't implemented the interrupt handling yet. Uh, that's going to come in a subsequent merge request. Um, so that's it. This this allows us now to um, to write simulation extensions uh, using C. Uh, it's useful for some cases. For the most part, C Sharp is very nice for writing simulation extensions. We can do a lot with C Sharp. We can simulate models with C Sharp. Everything we want. But sometimes it's it's necessary to have extensions in C. And one of the use cases for this is that we can we can create monitoring. Um, widgets and uh, we can use LVGL to create um, graphical uh, interfaces that help us debug and test our firmware. And we can also use libraries that are accessible from C and C++ um, to uh, to create more complex simulations like for example motor simulation we can have we can implement uh, a device simulation for that uh, we, we can do uh, lots of different things uh, when we have this this binding um, from the firmware side to the simulation side so that's it for today uh, I hope you learned something and uh, if you want to learn more about the switch embedded platform SDK go to switch embedded.com forward slash SDK um, and that's it for now. 
Um, have a good weekend. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye.